Well, welcome to the basic organization of the nervous system. I'm Dr. Rushmore. And in this video, we will examine the general plan of the nervous system and show you how the function of the nervous system is reflected in its organization. We'll also look at a special portion of the nervous system called the autonomic nervous system, which is comprised of two distinct subsystems which subserve different functions and therefore have slightly different organizations. So throughout this and throughout the entire course, we're sort of following the mantra that function follows structure. Okay, so when we think about the nervous system in very large terms, we can distill it down to a system that receives information from the periphery, sends it to the central nervous system for processing, and then performs a certain action based on that. So, in other words, we have a sensory input to the central nervous system, which in our case is the brain or the spinal cord, and then, based on the processing of the central nervous system, which derives from the sensory information, there is some sort of action taken. And by and large, this is a motor action. It is a muscle movement, uh, particularly of strided or voluntary muscles. So, for instance, if we uh, change the color, oops, we can say at a very simple level, level of a reflex, Let's say when we touch a hot stove, this produces pain in our thermoreceptors. This will be quickly sent to the central nervous system, in particular the spinal cord, if we use our finger. And the central nervous system will tell the muscles to move away from the hot stove. And so there is a motor withdrawal. All right, so we have sensory in, some sort of processing and then a motor output. All right, so in general, this is the idea of how the nervous system works. And it's an idea that is reflected blink, in the structure of the spinal cord. So this is a histological section near BUH-153 of the spinal cord. And so what we can quickly draw is actually the boundary of the spinal cord like so. Oops. And we find that invariably there are nerves attached to the spinal cord in one of two areas. Okay. Now before we get to this we have to establish it. This is the dorsal direction of the spinal cord and this is the ventral direction these nerves that go in or out of the spinal cord are known as roots. So, roots. This right here is named for its position. So this is the dorsal root. And this little guy here is also named for its position, the ventral root. And you'll notice that there is a bit of a swelling here in the dorsal root. These are cell bodies and this is known as the dorsal root ganglion. And this is sort of inside the dorsal root itself. Okay, in the spinal cord, we have a very easy division that we can make based on the silver stain. There is an outer collection of axons going to and from brain. This is called white matter. And then this encapsulates a sort of butterfly type of structure. Uh, this is the gray matter. And this contains axons, this contains dendrites, and most importantly, cell bodies. And so these little holes that you can see, uh, sort of yellowish holes, these are the large cell bodies, large neurons of um, the spinal cord. OK, so this is what the spinal cord looks like. Now, in the 1800s or so, there were two scientists that independently studied the organization of the spinal cord. And these folks were Bell and Magendi. And uh, they did a, an experiment which really uh, elucidated how specific and how nicely organized this all is. And so what they did quite easily was, or what Magendi did actually, was first he cut the dorsal root. And when he did so, he noticed that the experimental animals 
uh, had no sensation. Could not feel pain, they could not feel touch or pressure, but they were fine when it came to moving. In a separate experiment, he cut the ventral root. And when he did so, he noticed that the animals still had sensation. But were paralyzed. And so from this, it was concluded that this idea of input-output organization was really reflected in the structure of the spinal cord. That is to say, sensory information was separate from motor information. And the sensory information traveled in the dorsal root. And motor information came from neurons, these large cells that you see here, that live in the ventral aspect of the spinal cord, gray matter. And they went out here, in the ventral root. And they went to striated or voluntary muscles. Okay. You get the idea. Okay. So, this is the general conclusion that the input output organization of the spinal cord is reflected in the structure. So, it's nice, right? Okay. But this is only voluntary information. Now, it turns out that voluntary information has a different structural uh, basis than involuntary information. So, what is the difference here? Well, voluntary information... Let's see, I think, has a one neuron chain. And this is a motor neuron that lives in the spinal cord, which goes through the ventral root, goes all the way to the muscle, and actually contacts the muscle. This is a voluntary information. The involuntary systems, which are also known as the autonomic systems, fall on Terry, have a two neuron chain. And this involuntary systems, they innervate glands, innervate many organs, and they innervate involuntary or smooth muscle. The first neuron lives in the central nervous system, usually a little more dorsally, here or in fact here, then travels out the ventral root, but it ends before getting to its target, which let's say is T. Contacts a second neuron, which then sends its axon to contact the target. So here is a two neuron chain, here is a one neuron chain. So there's a fundamental distinction here. Now there are two types of autonomic systems. There is the sympathetic system. And this is the system that is activated when, for instance, you might see a tiger. It's the fight or flight response. It activates the organism for either fight or flight. In the sympathetic system, the ganglion is located right near the spinal cord. This is where the first neuron sends its axon, contacts the second neuron, and then this neuron sends an axon out and contacts the target. So the first axon is short, second axon is long. And this again is fight or flight. The parasympathetic is the second type of autonomic system. And this is what's known as the rest or digest system. This is the system that is activated after turkey dinner, after you know, the Sunday on the couch. And this motor system starts in the same place and initially goes to the same place, the ventral root, but goes for quite some time before synapsing 
on a target. This is a ganglion, and then the target is very close to that ganglion. And so here, the first neuron has a long axon, the second neuron has a short axon. So there's a fundamental difference between well, function, fight or flight, rest and digest, and structure. Two neuron chain with a long and a short, and a short and a long. Alrighty, so the take home message of this video overall is that the input-output function of the voluntary system is reflected in its anatomy. And the same is true for the autonomic system, namely structural differences relate to functional differences. Okay, see you next time.